I feel like electioneering in India has evolved beyond the door to door campaign that I was used to seeing, right? Um, I still remember, again, this was the first time I voted. Um, my lawmaker and you know the person who was competing with him would come to our house in fact on the polling day they, they would also arrange for transport right they would like you that was those were the days where you would feel completely pampered and then completely ignored <laughs> which is a which is a different story but to your point um i feel like elections today is all about um you know videos and and um ai campaigns and things like that but like with everything, um, technology is not good or bad, um, but technology can be used in the right hands. Um, it can be used as a way to empower um, people. In the wrong hands, um, it can it can be extremely damaging, right? Um, in fact, from a few weeks back, or I think a month or so back, um, one of my... Uh, Indian colleagues um, shared with me the whole outrage around, um, I think it was Rashmika Mandana's fake fake video um, and everybody kind of waking up and saying, hey, this is wrong. This stuff's been happening for two years now, right? It's just that it, it took... Um, it, it, it took um, Rashmika's fans to, to create that outrage and, and, and it's good. I mean, people are waking up to this. This is real, right? Um, but coming back to elections, um, we're going to see this, Pratishta, in this election as well as in any future elections. Um, this is not, by the way, just happening in India. It's happening in the US. It's going to happen in, in other election cycles in other countries. Um, next year is a major election year. Um, 63 countries go to polls, including some major democracies, um, US and India being the biggest, right? So so this is going to happen and manifest uh, in multiple countries in multiple cycles. But um, get ready for deep fake propaganda, get ready for um, misrepresentation, right? Um, if you think of um, the poster child for deep fake um, videos, you can think of the Pope in the puffer jacket, right? That was the first time somebody generated a deep fake. Um, you've seen Trump being arrested, very fake but believable images. Now let's zoom in on India, right? Um, you wouldn't be surprised or you shouldn't be shocked um, if you start to see um, digital cells of different parties, obviously, um, creating messages uh, either misrepresenting um, or perhaps even damaging reputation of their opponents. Um, it's very easy to spoof audio using AI. Um, so for example, Pratishta, if, if I have a capture of your voice, um, and by the way, this is not futuristic stuff, this is happening today, I can completely recreate a speech in your voice pattern, in your voice tone, without even your consent or you knowing that this can be done. Um, and by the way, this is this is not expensive technology, right? OpenAI, 20 bucks a month, you get access to OpenAI. Um, so technology is accessible. Technology doesn't have guardrails. And it's very easy to create and replicate visual media, right? And all of this makes for um, a heady concussion of, you know, if you're a motivated actor, you're a bad actor, it's very, very easy to create um, uh, messages, propaganda, um, information that is incorrect. Um, and you can you can take any number of controversial issues, right? Um, whether it is, I mean, geopolitics is, is top of mind for everyone, right? Um, you could you, you've already seen so much, so many narratives and counter narratives around Chinese occupying Indian territory, right? Now imagine creating fake videos, fake posters, you know, fake imagery um, that supports that. That can stoke emotions. Um, communal rights are just one image away. Um, we have seen how Manipur, for example, has been ravaged by ethnic tensions. And it doesn't take long to stoke um, ethnic tensions using one fake image, 
um, or one fake video. Um, and just like road rage, when people are angry, nobody cares enough to check if something is authentic or not, right? Um, likewise, um, there are so many, you know, videos and content um, that is used to spoof politicians, malign their reputation, um, intentionally, unintentionally. But this, this is this is there. This is happening. This is swirling, right? Um, and uh, believe it or not, um, the fact-checking ecosystem in India is also fledgling and extremely, extremely polarized, right? I mean, you would imagine facts are about fact-checking is about facts, right? How can that be polarized? Uh, but then, um, you know, whether it's in, and by the way, it's not just an Indian phenomenon, right? In the US, you have Republican fact-checkers and Democrat fa fact-checkers. In India, you have a Congress fact-checker and you have a you know, a fact checker aligned with with the with the establishment. So it's just interesting to see how um, even fact checking um, has been polarized, um, and and you'll see this increasingly. Um, the, the whole media landscape, um, fact checking landscape, um, everything seems to be questionable. So then the question is how do you cut through the noise right um and I, I don't have a great answer for this pratishtha but um in what i have observed the only true counter is um being aware um keeping yourself informed consuming news from multiple perspectives um trying to um trying to look beyond the spin and focusing on facts right um a, a few a few tips and tricks that i have used in my own professional and personal life um sometimes when something seems outrageous something seems unbelievable um i try to read the same information from multiple sources and i try to look for consistency across multiple sources right and if it is consistent right if three or four publications um diverse publications tend to say the same thing, then yes, I take that with, with, with some amount of faith and belief, right? Um, or trying to, uh, if something has been fact-checked, um, trying to um, look to see, um, you know, what's the reputation of the fact-checker, right? Um, have his, have the, have the previous um, fact checks um being questioned right so so there's small little things like this that you could do um right from checking the veracity of the fact checker to looking for consistency across multiple sources to consuming information from multiple sources and not just one source right um believe it or not um whether you're on youtube or twitter we all tend to get consumed in a certain rabbit hole um, and the algorithms are optimized to suck you in, right? Um, and so the, the more you follow and read a particular political personality or a political leaning, it's very easy for the algorithm to read you, right? So making sure that you de-bias the algorithm yourself, um, and, and I do it myself, right? Um, when I'm on a website, I either delete my cookies or I on purpose browse different websites either to trick the algo or to tell the algo I don't have a particular political leaning because um, because I'm I'm trained to think that way, right? So despite the platform claims that, yeah, you know, algos are normalized and things like that, I'm, I do this as personal hygiene. I make sure... Um, that I, um, I I watch out that I'm not getting sucked into um, my own filter bubble. Um, I, I try to see, um, I try to make sure my own biases aren't getting amplified and things like that.